Welcome to another episode of True North. We have with us Pallav Nadhani, co-founder and CEO of Fusion Charts. Welcome Pallav to the conversation. So Pallav, you started out at 16. It's a very interesting startup story that you have. You know, at an age when a lot of young boys are uh, under their blankets reading things that they are not supposed to be reading, you started up in, from your bedroom in Kolkata. What was that like? I think pocket money. That was the most important reason. So I call myself an accidental entrepreneur. So while most boys were reading the, the, those things, you also need money to buy those, go to cafe coffee day and bowling. And there's only so many times you can go to your dad and ask for pocket money. And at that point in time, I knew how to code. The internet was pretty fresh. I said, why not apply some of those skills and start figuring out how to make some money off the internet. So the entire saga started from there. How much money did you make at the first time? Actually, this is not a product that I had built earlier. So I was writing for a website called ASP Today and they would pay a dollar a word. So I tried writing an article which was very long, but they capped it to 1500 words. So that was $1,500 for the first check. And then how did this uh, fusion charts happen? So once I published that article, which was about data visualization itself, a lot of readers got back to me and said, hey, you know what, why don't you add this feature for me or make this modification? And a bunch of them were willing to pay. After a point in time, I realized that, hey, if I'm doing it one-off for so many people, why not add all that, all those changes and uh, make it a product? So again, that was another accident, just something which I said, okay, let's try and do it. And then one thing led to another. You're known to be a keeper, very low profile of late. Uh, that's what you were telling me earlier. And do you think that helps an entrepreneur? So I think uh, two parts to that low profile. One is just getting off all the social media like Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, which is a major distraction. And more so because of the fact that you get so many notifications and you get the itch to look at all of them. And second, I think just uh, focusing more on what we are doing and being more productive at it rather than going to let's say a whole bunch of conferences where there's not a lot of value unless you are hiring or you have customers there just helps us focus more better what is your idea of success it's a, it's a very broad topic but to me success means personal happiness and that derives from the fact that you only have so many so much time in your life you want to build things which people want you want to work with great people while you're doing this you want to have fun so if you have all of these three combination like something to love, someone to love and something to hope for, I think that itself is success. You know, in a startup journey as an entrepreneur, you face challenges perhaps every day. What is it that you do when you face a challenge? The first thing that you do? Different occasions, different thing. Fight or flight. Yeah, you're still sort of thinking, hey, what to do about this? And then you take a deep breath and you sort of take a step back. So in most cases, what I do, at least if it's not solved in five minutes, sort of a framework, which I say my single unity of life and which helps me look back at things and saying life is compartmentalized into work, family, personal growth, so on and so forth. And then you have sub brackets within that. And the moment you step out of that, you're like, oh shit, this is such a small problem which I'm getting worried about. And when you look at that entire picture, you're like, hey, nothing is going to affect this. Uh, things will be okay tomorrow. What are the highs and lows in your journey so far? Oh, so many of them. I think the highs would be customers telling us about the good products that we have built. Uh, we had an occasion where we found a photo of, of we found photo of Barack Obama using our product for real. Wow. So that was a super high. Then team members building products and releasing when I'm out for vacation. That's a great high because it means we have created very capable teams. Lows are when obviously we fail on our deadlines or execution. Lows are when good people leave for reasons we could not control or we could not fix. Lows are when entire popula sorry entire team of uh, our entire team in Bangalore also left at a point in time. So those are some of the different lows that I can remember of right now. What's the first thing you do when you f in the, those lows? How do you react? Do you sulk? Do you what do you do? I think now I think I've gotten a little more uh, aware of that. So I just go and self reflect that hey, what happened? Why did it happen? Could we have done something to solve it? It was not something we could control. I'm like, okay, just a way of life. Deal with it, absorb it, swallow it with a bitter pill. But if it's something where it's our own mistake, uh, the first thing is to go back and sort of think how not to repeat it. But yeah, it's easier said than done. Again, like the first five minutes, you're like completely haywire. What is your true north? Still figuring it out at this point in time, but uh, the current known north is build great products from India. So I've been a product person, uh, my entire life I appreciate good products whether software or physical goods and unfortunately from India we have not created many global products so at least in my life can I create one more great product from India and second is how do I help 100 more entrepreneurs to become successful so I've been helping some entrepreneurs on and off for the last few years and also investing in them so joy of seeing them succeed and the joy of at least being some part of that journey is uh, incredulous what do you look for in a mentor 
there's no specific one thing but if i have to sort of bring a few things one is empathy for their customers like who are you building for what problem are you solving is it a real problem second is ensuring that while they're building it they have great team around them and those team members then go on and form their own companies so where it's not just a very uh, top down approach but where you're sailing the ship along with your crew members along and i think third and very important for me somebody who has fun along the way i've seen a lot of people burn down in their journey so somebody who's not having fun along the way especially in times of distress uh, they sort of lose the plot so these three things at least from the top of my mind right now what has entrepreneurship taught you to be humble and more accepting your biggest regret not getting mentorship and advice from people who i currently get from uh, what brings a smile to your face i think two things customers and team members what do you do when you're not working so either i'm working or i'm partying at least till last year 5 months ago i had a daughter ah. so now uh, it's work of playing with her bootstrapped or uh, funded mine is bootstrapped so obviously there's a bias towards it but uh, not all businesses can be bootstrapped so i don't think this itself should be a starting choice for an entrepreneur and your favorite book no definite one but uh, if i have to pick a few books uh, the hard things about hard things then only the paranoid can survive uh, the self illusion Thank you so much Pallav for joining us. It was a wonderful conversation. Thank you for hosting me Dipti.